the shores of beautiful Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome to Walking in Victory with Bishop Neil C. Ellis. The powerful and prophetic ministry of Bishop Neil C. Ellis is impacting the lives of believers all around the world. His bold and forthright presentation of spiritual truths and biblical principles is sure to change your life forever. Get ready to experience a fresh approach to ministry as this anointed author and pastor teaches us how to walk in victory. Walking in victory. Hello and welcome to Walking in Victory. I'm Jeremy Gibbs, the pastor designate for the Ministry of Health here at Mount Tabor and also the executive assistant to the Bishop of Protocol for the Global United Fellowship. And I am delighted that you've tuned into this special telecast on today. In today's telecast and all month long, we will share with you highlights from the Gathering 2021. This year's gathering took on a different operating style in consideration of the COVID-19 protocols. The conference model was a hybrid, which allowed for limited in-person participants with the majority of our attendees being online under the theme, Global 360, embracing our call, engaging our culture. The conference commenced each morning with prayer and intercession. On the first day, our first noon session featured a robust discussion with Bishop Ellis and our conference chair, Bishop Paul Ray, and co-chair, Dr. Jamal Bryan, reviewing the five prongs of the Global United Fellowship, following which our bishop ended the session with a special inspirational word that was a blessing to us all. I would like to share this session and inspirational message with you today. Please listen and be blessed. Let me now move speedily to the primary purpose for why we are here. Dr. Brian and myself are serving under an incredible leader, and we are honored to have him join us now on stage, the, none other than our presiding bishop, a deliberate and dynamic pastor, a preacher, a priest, a prophet, and yes, even a patriarch. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, our presiding bishop, Bishop Neil C. Ellis. Thank you very much, Bishop Ray. And and thank you. And what a privilege it is to be, first of all, in uh, Atlanta. Secondly, though, in New Birth. Yes. And I'm here with our brother and friend, Dr. Jamal Bryan, who is our ho host, but he's also the co-chairman of this week's event. I want to thank both of you for the stellar job you've done in pulling this all together. You, you've made what we had all we had really was a vision, and you both come together with your team to make it a reality, and I applaud you both for it. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Bishop, you know, as we're, and thank you, by the way, for just being open enough to say, you know, let's, if we're going to do different, let's do different. If we're going to be different, let's be different. And this is truly different. In many ways, uh, this time together, this conferencing this week is in politely spoken, a new model uh, for reaching not only generations there, but in a whole new technological day when we're still trying to figure out, for example, just uh, what the new normal is for we know that it's not going to be church as usual in the future, etc. And you've addressed many of these. But I know key to your heart is, as the visionary that God laid five key prongs uh, in your spirit for global. It serves as the predicate of global. The first of those is to unite. My first question to you, and perhaps a question particularly for those of us that are in America, because we've seen divisiveness unlike any other time among evangelicals and the, uh, what we call the black church and uh, just among the body of Christ. 
how are you looking at and what is the Holy Ghost saying to you about that prong of uniting in an era where even among the body of Christ, we're looking at alternative universes of reality? Well, thank you, Bishop Bray. And you know, one of the things we've got to keep in mind is God is ever speaking. He never stops speaking. And uh, we've got to always be listening for the progressive word of God. Uh, so what Unite meant to us eight years ago means something almost completely different now. Mm. While we can hold on to the foundational aspect of what he said to us, he have a progressive word for the change in times. Mm -hmm. And we know um, uh, everything around us, for the most part, has changed in the last 19 months. Mm -hmm. The way we live, the way we fellowship, the way we travel, the way we do church, all of that has changed. But what we've got to, got to do as a fellowship is change with the times. And in order to embrace our call and, and, and to really impact and enhance our, our culture, we've got to address what's going on around us. Uh, where we are now in the body of Christ demands that if we're going to be impactful agents for the kingdom of God, we cannot function in isolation. And uh, we, we've seen that God has given the body of Christ a time of isolation so you can come together and really in your own time of isolation understand what it means for unification. Mm -hmm. So we've been shut down, many of us, we've been locked down in our homes for months and weeks over the past uh, 19 months. And we've had this time for all of us in the body of Christ to, to, to step aside for a minute and analyze what it is God is doing or wants to do with us and through us in this season. And I'm convinced, Bishop Ray, more than ever before, God is calling for the body of Christ to unite. Mm. No one person, no one group can get this thing done. And no one person or no one group can actually unite the body of Christ. But I am so convinced in my heart of hearts that God is raising up strategic leaders in strategic areas of the body right now. And we got to be very careful that we do not become a judgmental people. Because I believe some of who God is raising up now do not look like what we expected them to look like in the last season. And we've got to be very careful, careful because if we don't embrace right. these people that do not have the look, mm -hmm. we could miss an opportunity in, in tapping into a segment of who God is raising up to unite the entire body. Mm -hmm. And so as we come together, I believe in the old adage that we are stronger together right. and of course, if we don't come together, you might be able to do your little piece, and you might be able to do your little piece, and I might be able to do my little piece. But when all of these little pieces come together, oh yeah. they form a major puzzle, yes. and the picture is painted and seen very clearly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Bishop, thank you for being an example. Kier, uh, the New York Times just released uh, an article last week that this is... Uh, maybe the last era of real bipartisan politics, uh, that people are really just being loyal even to a fault amongst party lines, uh, and such as it is in the kingdom, that uh, many people are so beholden to their denomination uh, that they don't understand the unity of fellowship. Uh, and Global United Fellowship has brought people from all different backgrounds, whether they're Pentecostal, Apostolic, Word of Faith, Methodist, Baptist, under one umbrella to give us a sneak preview of what kingdom is all about. Uh, and so I think what it is that we're going to see over these three days is going to be really effective in that. I want you to talk about really equipping uh, us uh, because we're getting a lot of, Bishop, inspiration 
but very little information. Yes. Uh, and so the whole equipping notion uh, is so critical. I want you to talk about the church's role in equipping the saints and the fellowship as yes. well. Well, that, that's a very, very good question, Dr. Bryan, because we are in an era of information. Mm. If the church is going to rise from the ashes of this pandemic, we've got to be an enlightened and equipped people. This fellowship has been mandated by God eight years ago to equip the saints. Now, again, what that meant eight years ago is not what it means today. Right. We've got to understand where we are as, as, as a church, as the body of Christ. Uh, this is a technologically driven age. Uh, m you and I and Bishop Ray, we preach to more people on Sunday mornings outside of the walls of our church yes. than those who are on the inside. I don't foresee that changing for a moment. Now, what we've got to understand is in order to keep that crowd, we've got to be an enlightened people. We've got to be an equipped people. We have to be a relevant people, delivering a message to pe people across the globe. Uh, and we've got to be able not only to attract them, to, but to maintain them, which means then a fellowship like ours has the responsibility in this season to look among us. We are all convinced that God has raised up so many people among us, around us, uh, people who we know in the body of Christ who, who may, you can, you can be convinced that they are anointed, the hand of God is upon them, but they're not as equipped as they need to be to right. be as effective as they could be. Yes. Now, so this for us is not the time to point fingers or to criticize, but to walk alongside of these people and, and better equip them for the, the task for which they have been anointed. We are so blessed in the Global United Fellowship that we have people of the five-fold ministry gifts in our fellowship. It's time for us now to equip those people through those five prongs, but we've got to also now equip the church for how we do church in this technologically driven age, which is a totally different uh, ball game than we, than we were familiar with 19 months ago. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's heavy. And of course, we know, as you said, in this technological age, it, it, you mentioned, Dr. Bryan, of course, that we have a lot of inspiration, but little information, and much of that's misinformation that's, right. uh, that, that's out there. Bishop, in the prong of building, uh, that's been an area of, of you know, deep prayer for myself, because even just looking in my local environs, uh, that prong of building and strengthening relationships, and, and, and it kind of goes with the uniting, but the building aspect, uh, to me, must be a real challenge to your spirit. Uh, when we look at an era that's uh, building relationship, first of all, Where's the common ground? As we, what's the predicate of common ground now? Has that shifted? Uh, when we look at an era, I think it was 2017, Time Magazine had a cover article on, Is Truth Dead? Wow. Uh, we're living in what's called a post-truth era. Uh, even comedians, I think it was Stephen Colbert that coined the phrase, truthiness because it's not necessarily truth. It's got a little bit of truth in it. And at the same time, we have a major fallacy and a fault line in the body of Christ according to Thessalonians, that we're seeing a departure from love of truth. How do we build relationship and build uh, from a common ground with such a dichotomy of truthiness? First of all, Bishop Ray, let me just, let me just begin by saying this. It is very, very important, indeed very, very critical now that persons like ourselves and those of us who are in leadership in the body of Christ be very, very clear about the lens through which we view things. Right. And if those lens do not point us back to the word of God, Good. we're going to be in bad Good. shape. Right. Now, as it relates to building uh, the Global United Fellowship, when God gave us this particular prong, I didn't see at that time buildings and facilities, etc. They may come, but obviously that was not the focus. 
the focus on building and more so now in this uh, 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 era that we find ourselves in, we've got to be about the process of building up one another. That's right. We, we have, we've all been a part of groups and fellowships and denominations, etc., where we've seen people tear down one another. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they use you and then they abuse you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not the, the, the mark of this fellowship. Uh, we are supposed to be about the business of building up our brothers and building up our sisters. And really, you can only do that if the lens you are looking through right. point you back to the word of God. That's right. Because, because uh, both of you gentlemen are leading the way. And I want to make sure they understand, while I just had the vision, you guys put this together with your team, a, a, a great team. That's because you were gifted to do it. My gift is to dream. And to visualize. <laughs> and I don't envy y'all. And so until we have leaders who are free to release his people and their people to do, do what they've been anointed to do, we'll continue to do things to suppress people wow. and keep them down. And that's not God's way. Mm. We are supposed to build up for the edification of the body. All right, and so I'm very, very serious about this element, this issue about women and ministry, and all. that should be a dead issue by now. Right. Yes, women in issue, women preaching. I mean, if you're still there, you missed the boat big time. Yeah. All right, and really, you you probably got wiped out with the pandemic, <laughs> right? Be- because in this season of life, in this season of ministry, we have to look at those who God is using. And there's no space for gender. I I could foresee the day, probably in my lifetime, where a a woman could be the presiding bishop of this fellowship. I mean, why dismiss it if that's the person who God is using at the time? All right, and so when we look through the lens that point us back to the scripture to know that it's in him that we live. Yes, sir. It's in him that we move. Right. It's in him that we have our being. Yes. Then, then we, would, we would move away from envy and yes. jealousy and malice and strife and just enhance one another. Yes. Just build up one another. Yes. And I'm committed to doing so more than ever before. He's the sovereign Lord. I call him the king of glory. Sing, Lord, your grace. Lord, your your grace. grace. So great. So great. Your grace. Come on and lift your voice into the Lord and sing. Lord, your grace, Lord, your grace so great, so great, your grace. I want to call your attention today to the very, very first verse of the fourth chapter of the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 4, verse number 1, has what it says. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me, saying, Come up higher, and I will show you things which must take place after this. I just have two words that will constitute a subject for these few minutes we have together and they're the two words higher 
ground. Higher ground. Wherever you are uh, around the world today, I want you to repeat these words with me. I am blessed, strong, and healthy. I am creative, courageous, and confident. I am increasing in the anointing with wisdom, favor, and influence. I am on the verge of one of the greatest victories I have ever known. What's waiting for me in the days ahead is greater than what I've ever seen. I want you to receive those words as a word from God specifically to you. Ladies and gentlemen, what God has planned for your life is designed to take you further than you can ever imagine. Please hear me as an oracle of God today when I say to you, God wants to show you some things that are to come. However, what God wants to show you cannot be seen on the level of faith you are presently on. Today, he is calling you to ascend to higher ground. In order to embrace your call, in this season, you've got to go to higher ground. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a place that God has prepared for all of us. It's a place of blessing, a place of refreshing, and a place of fulfillment. And if you are not there yet, more than likely, it's because the life you are living in is bigger than the level you are living on. And so today, as we launch this reset agenda in our fellowship in an attempt to impact our culture, I want to say to all of you, God is calling us to higher ground. Why is he doing it? He wants to give you a revelation of what's coming. He wants to give you a glimpse of where your life is headed. God wants you to have a post-pandemic view of what life will be like after these things. But what he wants to show you, you cannot see or experience on the pre-pandemic level of faith you operated on prior to March 2020. After these things, John said, I looked. And when I looked, I saw something. What did John see? He saw a door standing open in heaven. That's interesting, ladies and gentlemen, because doors don't stand. Doors hang. That means what John saw was something unusual. Can I announce as a prophet from God today that what God is getting ready to show you, chances are you've never seen before. Get your spirit ready because some of what God wants to show you is going to be unusually different. God's plan for your life, ladies and gentlemen, cannot be stopped by a bad break or layoff or a pandemic or a major disappointment. God's plans for your life cannot be stopped by somebody else's view of you. All of the forces of darkness combined cannot stop God's plans for your life. Please hear me. God wants to show you a glimpse of what's coming in your life, in your ministry, in your career, in your future. God wants to give you a revelation of what your life is going to look like. 
So take your eyes off what's been. Forget the things which are behind you. Don't stay on the level of hurt and pain, disappointment and discouragement that you've been on for some time now. We must come to realize that as long as we are actively engaged in the work of the kingdom, the enemy of the faith will challenge our authority, our strength, and our faith on every level, at every turn, by any means necessary. What is his aim? It's to render you weak, weary, and powerless as it relates to your doing the work of the kingdom that God has assigned to your hands. And he does so at very strategic times. What's the goal? To get you to quit before due season. Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest difference between those who see their God-given dreams fulfilled and those who don't are usually the people who refuse to quit. They don't always have the best resources at their disposal. They're just people who refuse to quit. Can I remind you? God does not get weary. God is not a quitter. God is a finisher. What God starts, he completes. Now why is that important? Because you and I were made in his image. Created in his likeness. And God is not a quitter. God is a finisher. And since we were created in his image and made in his likeness by nature, you are not a quitter. You must have satanic help to quit. Your whole nature means you go from glory to glory to glory and from faith to faith. You got to have satanic help to quit. And anytime you're involved in a kingdom assignment and you feel yourself getting weary, it's a sign that you are close to a due season. God has so uniquely gifted you to the point that if for some reason you stumble by the wayside, your inner strength is enough to cause you to get back up on your feet and start all over again. You have an inner power. It's called the anointing. The anointing is a special outpouring of the power of God for the express purpose of accomplishing a task that he has assigned to your hands. When God gives you an assignment, he gives you the anointing for it. There's no need for people to be jealous of you. They can't stop it. There's no need to be envious of somebody else's gifts and abilities and the assignment that God has placed in their hands. You can't stop it. God gives us an anointing to finish. I want you to look at somebody if you're near someone, if you're not near anybody, talk to yourself and tell yourself, I'm anointed to finish. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, it's hard to keep an anointed believer down. This word has been embraced over the years, but how many of you understand what it truly means? Better yet, how many of you understand how to pray? The answer has been provided through what we know as the Lord's Prayer. Bishop Neil Ellis has broken down this model for prayer in his new book series, The Pattern of Prayer. Book one, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Book two, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Book three, give us and forgive us. Book four, lead us and deliver us. 
and book five, the kingdom, the power, the glory, are now all available in paperback, hardback, and Kindle at www.neilellisministries.com, amazon.com, and locally at 100% Bookstore and Logos Bookstore. Bishop Neil C. Ellis and the Mount Tabor Church family in Nassau, Bahamas, wish to thank you for viewing the Walking in Victory broadcast and invite you to tune in next week to experience this powerful prophetic ministry. Should you wish to correspond with Bishop Ellis, please write him at P.O. Box N9705, Nassau, Bahamas, or email him at info at neilellisministries.com. Walking in Victory.